Mm, okay. Okay, so according to the voice, we're recording. So we started out just with the Tandem, uh, the psychic point, two inches below the navel and a couple inches in. So we've been doing some exercises. So we'll do a quick recap. Ah, all right. So what do you do with that point? That's a tricky one because you know you read a book about it, you start to think about it, which is you know good. I mean, it's a beginning place. But several things, just just focusing on that point again, my breathing. Notice the breathing kind of settles into more natural, deeper place. And when my mind is too busy, noisy mind, okay, it's the, the breathing tends to be kind of up in the chest or even the throat. And uh, one point that uh, Cliff kind of made, he feels more ground. Okay, and, and kind of what I get right there, for example. At that point, I got the upper idea of it, so it starts to calm down a bit. But talking about ground, there's the lower support area. Idea, the beginnings of the experience, the feel experience. So I kind of get that too. When I, that kind of area fills in, calmer. If I'm kind of in between, I sort of know about it, I kind of starting to feel something, but I get pulled out. No, oh, oh, that's not. So to get the under of it, the under experience associated with the point, I uh, not so easily pulled out. Somebody comes to grab you here or anything. But, 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 there's emotion. And of course, then we're saying, okay, well, that point, now I'm going to extend my arm out, or better still, extend your key out, right? Okay, I've got to do that. I'm going to think about it. Boom, boom. Boom, there's a natural ground. And one of the best things you can do is uh, you can devise practices. Okay, for example, we're not going to do it, but I'm going to walk into the kitchen chance to focus, walk to the kitchen, all right? And I'm gonna open a jar of peanut butter. Okay, so I'll open the refrigerator, pull the peanut butter jar out, unscrew it, and then maybe get a spoon. Okay, now, there's that point. Walk to the refrigerator. There's that point, open the refrigerator door. There's that point, locate, and grab the peanut butter jar. There's the point, unscrew the lid. There's the point, get a spoon, start to get the peanut butter out. So, you know, those are things I don't do it all the time, but sometimes I devise little games like that. And, you know, there are words like becoming more mindful. I'm just too busy. Okay, I'm going to do this. Easy. And the point itself is uh, there's action, which usually involves movement, which goes into another action. And, and when my thoughts are like this, it's just all that way. But on a good day, there's a flow. This flows into that, this flows into that, this flows into that. And maybe one of the, uh, is it called the technology for a good day, is that point. And being more conscious. 
Again, simple practice. I'm going to stand up. I'm going to stand up. There's that point. I'm going to sit. There's that point. And I'm in a sitting position. There's that point. Become a bit more conscious of the room, more feel sense of what's behind. That way it settles a bit more under. We do practices sometimes where you go like that, or you lock and resist, but there's a this is hard to do on your own unless you can, you know, you have a partner in class, somebody grabs your wrist and they go, ah, then you correct them. That point, more under support flow, blend. So the Aikido class is, uh, although we get so busy doing the movement that sometimes we, we don't develop. Developing that just means, you know, you're, Put it into your left side, okay? Uh, Cliff, anything on your end so far? Um, just that I continue to notice that I'm feeling more grounded and calmer the yeah. more I walk around the room like this. Yeah, and so sometimes what it is a little bit is you devise practices. I remember, I think it was 2006, uh, Nado Sensei took a group of Aikidoists from this area or those associated with him, the CAA, to Tokyo, trained for a week at Hombu Dojo. What I did is I trained the first half of that week in, uh, in Tokyo. And then the last half, I went to the Kansai area and saw Ono Sensei and trained at the Shinku Dojo. But I remember when we were in the Tokyo, Tokyo half of it, the Do Sensei kind of, we went out and he said, this is my old apartment, which was a couple of blocks from world headquarters, very convenient. But he kind of told me, okay, this is how I used to do. And you know, there are a lot of like street lamps, and what he would do, he would kind of like, there's a street lamp. He would consciously center, walk to the next street lamp. Then he'd consciously center, walk to the next street lamp. Then he'd consciously center, walk to the next street lamp. That was a practice. And what happens with most of us, so I'm, I'm, getting, I'm walking somewhere. But I can, you know, my thoughts could be very, very undisciplined, running in very, a lot of different, I got it. So, you know, devising a practice, like Nado Sensei's practice of clicking into a center, going from post to post. Okay. So, you know, that's uh, the same thing. I can make the practice. Again, we did this earlier. Focus on that point. Stand. Focus on that point. Sit. In the act of sitting, there's that point. I'm about to make a motion. That motion is connected to that point. Okay. Uh, anything before we kind of move on? No, that's good. Okay. Yeah. Um, the um, thing is, you know, a lot of times you know, there's an activity, you know, that catches your attention. Like Aikido, for example, you go to a class, okay, <laughs> bow in, and there's a little training. You meet your training partners, your friends, ideally, and you train together. That's good. But there's kind of another level of development. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the, the, the point itself, 
It's just one of those um, elements that you can develop. And yeah, what comes up sometimes on your best day, that point's there. Doesn't mean, you know, that, oh, I don't want to focus on that point. I want to get into this fantastic, you know, it's like a Warriors win a couple of years ago and there's a victory parade. Yay! But that point's there. And you appreciate all that activity and everything, but there's that point. It's kind of ground to center. And conversely, if it's a not so good time, <laughs> something, <laughs> there's that point. And, you know, one of the ways that it was explained to me is, you know, there, there's called your physical strength. But then your true strength is more your interior. And when you develop that point, a lot of what you're doing is developing your interior strength. On your best day, it's there. And on your not so good day, it's there. It doesn't mean you're blocking things out on a bad day or that conversely, on a good day, I could be really getting into this, but I'm gonna focus on this and make that lesser. I don't know that that's really that way. Okay, but you're more conscious. If you got this, you can really appreciate a good day better. Wow, this is pretty cool. Ooh, it's ah, there's that too, okay? And I'm not saying that that's bad. Okay, so let's just say somebody grabs your wrist, I get into the movement, but there's that point. There's a blend. After a while, okay. But initially, I get out there. And one of the points I made to try to earlier, there's the upper half of it. I got to know about that point and thinking about it. So relax, we focus. So there's kind of the awareness of that point. But what starts to happen after a bit, and this doesn't have to take you years, right? there's that feel experience. So it's kind of like the under half of the experience at that point. Mm. Mm. Like for example, here I get the, the whole thing that, you know, all of a sudden that standing motion is kind of like a hydraulic lift here. Boom. Boom. Kojima Sensei, one of my favorite teachers from my Japan period, he worked in a factory, what did he run? Uh, one of those things, you know, the forklift. Mm. 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 In fact, his coach, you know, was like that forklift. But feel experience mm. half of it. Ah, and the, uh, let's say you're in a position where I, I know when I, Got back from Japan in 1975. Me and my mom had been diagnosed with cancer. And uh, it actually had metastasized. And so she, you know, my, my year back from Japan, uh, she was, she got very ill, was in and out of the hospital and everything. And my dad, you know, came to me and said, uh, I got to work. Your sister is in San Francisco, you know, in pharmacy school. You teach, you do, do your Aikido, but you have the ability. So when your mom's in the hospital, I want you there. So I said, yeah, okay. And, you know, that's, a, you know, not a situation I would wish on anybody. And if I'm kind of down, you know, what's why this is happening at this point, I'm not going to offer any support, am I? I won't say that it was a conscious thing then, but a lot of the work in 
where I trained in Japan it was about inner development. So, you know, and, you know, my mom's battling cancer. It was very bad case of cancer, unfortunately, and she passed away during that year. But, you know, what would happen is that in the midst of all that, I could just crack her up and make her laugh. And I don't know where that came from. But I think it came from the ability to, to kind of, in some sense, you know, a lot, a lot of times you're things out there, maybe you're not what you want. And you could head trip and, and there's that point. One thing Hikizuchi Sensei, uh, the chief instructor of that place that I trained, he uh, you say it's Shinken Shogu. It's like live body training. In live body training, if you react out there, you're facing a live blade. Now, in terms of our particular thing, it's just a circumstance. So like your situations and we keep our center, keep conscious. Because if I just been, why is this happening? Da, 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 I couldn't have offered her any strength. So in that way, it, it was kind of like a, a blessed, uh, it was, the cancer itself was, was, was really unfortunate. Okay. But, you know, in, in, in a way I could, by being a bit more there, offer her support in a very bad situation, offer her energy, which I couldn't do if I was just bummed out about it. So within that, I mean, you know, you don't want to go around wishing for bad things to happen. So if you practice that point, that's not the whole point of it. But one thing that, that came to me recently was uh, uh, an old Bruce Lee quote. And the quote was something like, it's not word for word, but it's like instead of wishing for a good life, wish for the strength to handle a not so good life. Because life is gonna be a, a mixture of good and bad, light and dark, okay? And you know, we appreciate the good periods, that's great. But then there are always gonna be the downs, the unfortunate, the even tragic things. And so the point itself is there in your best times and it's there in your not so good times. Anything on that before we move on and start some motion? No, I, I think that's a good approach. That's, yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah, a lot of times, you know, we go, eh, and we go, eh, we crash, right? And there's a point where appreciate what's going on out there. And there's that point. And conversely, there's going to come the, the, the not so good times. And there's that point. Because you can't offer yourself or anybody else anything if those down periods. Deal with your anger. I mean, it's like, I don't like this stuff that just happened. Uh, yeah, there's that point. And then you somehow draw within the reservoir of your interior strength. And you have the ability to offer something. Like my mom, I can't remember exactly what it was, but you know, I used to uh, train with Tojima Sensei. And we would, you know, I mean, this was 1973, 74, okay. A little bit in 75 and we would just go at it on the mat because he used to train when he wasn't the teacher. And we would just crack each other up. And there was something of that, you know, because he had he really developed this. And so when I had that situation with my mom, for whatever reason, it was like I had that ability when she was battling 
very serious cancer that just crack her up and make her laugh. And I remember my dad you know, comes up to me and says, you know, you're the only one that can do that. And she said, you know, that's good. Because the rest of us are just so down and so angry about this that, that you're the one that can go in there and make her laugh, right? And if I'm down there and hating everything because life has brought this in, then I can't offer that. So it's, it's a contradiction. You really want to make a difference. Develop that point. And so standing up. And we're kind of here. Let me get this out of the camera range. Ah. Yeah. Just kind of enjoying kind of being in the body. Feeling the body move, and there's that point. Now, from that point, there's motion and stillness. In stillness, there's that point. In motion, there's that point. Create a game. I'm going to walk to the clock. Motion is the point. Pick the clock up. There's that point. Check the time. There's that point. Reposition the clock so I can see it a little better. I just created a kind of a mind. Well, the term is mindful, but it's too full of the idea. The under half is more the feel experience at that point. This will help you. Ah. I'm standing here. I'm noticing that my balance is good. My feet are on the ground. Step back a little bit to get the fuller body on the screen. And we can practice this like this somewhat in class, for example. You know, you go like this and you extend your key out. Okay? You know, the problem is I'm extending the key and so you've got that point. It's hard to check yourself. Now from here, I'm just standing here. Somebody gives me a little point or that. At that point, and that point is just whether I'm in motion or in a kind of a still place. So you can devise little practices, then you get to the dojo. It's like the Do Sensei is walking from light pose to light pose to light pose. Motion is there in motion, it's there in stillness. It's there when you turn, it's there when you can return, it's there when you're just standing. And you know, if I'm just somewhere early, I Habitually, what do I do? I reach for my phone. It's also fun sometimes to say, okay, I'm just gonna go to stand in a line and practice that point. And what, what happens in theory, your balance starts to show a little bit. Other than that, you know, okay, I'm not there. I gotta stand in a line here. I'm gonna check what's going on. <laughs> You're allowed to do that. That's, that's the whole thing, obviously. You know. But it's another game. Okay. 
And before we get into anything else, anything uh, that you uh, want to add, or anything come up for you that you would like to share? I'm having trouble putting it into words, but I am feeling more, um, I mean, it, it, more centered. It, it, it does dovetail nicely with what we were talking about baseball after class yesterday. Yeah, yeah. And, and all of that. So uh, I am feeling that connection. Yeah. Um, so I'm trying to um, imagine, you know, getting pushed on in various ways and just trying to stay centered and focused and vertical. Okay. Yeah, there's a, a lot of opportunities to practice. I mean, a sensei could do wonderful things, but you know, there's just the thought that maybe he practiced more than the rest of us do. And there's also what you practice. Fuller sense of that point, fuller sense of flow. Okay. Fuller sense of that point. This clears up a bit. Breathing starts to settle. Health improves. <laughs> okay. And up here and out there, it's a very stressful world. But there's that point. And you can call the physical term for it is hara. But, you know, the tanden, or the way Master Choi called it, Dantian, Chinese. And so when you're developing that, you're, you know, it doesn't mean that you're not having a lot of fun. Or a lot of things, you just have that point. And likewise, when things are not so good, there's that point. It doesn't mean you're ignoring the situation and everything like that. It's like kind of like my mom battling the cancer. It was, boy, that's with you. That is with you. You can't escape it. Okay. And so, you know, I was kind of, you know, I, I mean, it wasn't anything that, that I kind of got, except when my dad was saying, how do you do that? I said, to be honest with you, I don't know. Although I had a sense that, you know, hanging out with Tojima Sensei we would preference that point. It had a lot to do with it because he had a great sense of humor, very explosive, boom. And so when I could crack my mom up when she was very ill, that was, that was kind of a, a golden moment, you know. At the time, I didn't appreciate it that much. It was just, it would just happen. Okay, now. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I got this a while back. It's actually technically more of a Vulcan, but I kind of liked it because it's a triangular surface. And I kind of like the feel of that triangular surface, even though it's technically a Vulcan. And boom, boom. Okay. And, um, starting a new term at San Jose State. So we're introducing the 30 movements. We're gonna do some exams on that. Okay. So uh, I thought maybe what we do is uh, devote the remainder of the class. We just go through, let's just say the uh, first 10 movements. Okay. Now one thing we start out with, Now I'm putting the left hand here, which is kind of putting it on my thumb, but there's that point there. Now that point, up, down, down, up, kind of, you know, is your point the center? Yes, it is. But a lot of people kind of like the up, down, column sense of the center. Okay? 
even number one, that's hand fighting. Two starts with dripping, left hand dripping the bottom. Three, rightward movement and back, so up spiral. Movement number leftward and back. And down. Movement number five on the toes, boom. And now that point itself, as I said, it was just a point. Your area here, the havoc, is physical. It contains that point. Old physical body, there's that point. There's your body, and there's that point. Now, I can kind of just dreamily focus on that point, but again, focusing on that point gets me more immediately here and now. Okay? So, movement number one, I'll do it from this angle. Two starts with the grip, goes to the right, comes back. It's an up spiral. Leftward, back, down spiral. Up on the toes, boom. Okay. So you can think of the up, I say, you know, that represents something called heaven. Motion down, bird. And boom. Well, Sensei's one of his favorite things was the floating bridge of heaven. Okay, so you're centered between heaven and earth. That's a little big. Upward motion represents mind, downward motion represents body. Oh. And one way of kind of describing that is where your mind and your body kind of start to make a connection. Most of the time, I'm, my mind runs everything and it's going on too many directions at the same time. That's called stress. One, two, three, four. Okay. And I. That's there because a lot of our sensei stuff involved the image of the floating bridge of heaven. Ame no uki hashi. Now, we talked about the hara. Okay? Now, this is my hara, but in the kojiki, which is where you find the floating bridge of heaven, it's kind of like the fairy tale myths of of the gods and goddesses of Japan, okay? There's Takamagahara, the high plane of heaven, where the Amatsu Kami, the heavenly Kami, these are spirits, deities, gods, goddesses. And then there's what you call Kunitsu Kami, which is the earthly Kami. So Kami exists both there and there, in fact, you get that coming down here. Susama no Mikoto. One, two, three, four. And Hikizuchi Sensei used to say things like Zibu no Hara or Takamaga Hara Nishite. Your own. No way. It becomes the high plane of heaven. Okay? In fact, you know, the whole thing, in theory, all the gods and goddesses, both Amatsu Kami, Kunitsu Kami, exist kind of within you. So, Okay, good. Now, what we're going to do, I'm going to take a step with my left, we form a triangle. It looks a little bit this way. Now, if I kind of go like this, it's more of a square posture. But you know, we don't do things like this. We're 
kind of like this. It's a, it's a triangle. It's a point. It's a base. Not too wide. Also, don't. If I go this way, I'm going to trip over myself. So it's a natural step. I'm going to take a step from a triangle. I'm going to take a step from a triangle. I'm going to take a step back to the triangle. The triangle. And so over here, take a step, there's a triangle that forms. Okay, so we movement number five, left hand, right hand, right hand, right hip, left hand, about a shoulder width, not too, not plain pool here. We also don't want to choke up too much, about a shoulder width. And Point, base, body. I want you to visualize a closed door without twisting the knee and the knee can, left knee goes out, half open door. This is hard to do here, fully open door. But we go here, we go into that half open door position and Loose and easy, that's sloppy, that's too tense. I think of it as like dribbling a basketball. If I hold underneath, I'm carrying the ball. I have to be able to turn, turn, handle that, okay? But I'm dribbling from the top. Pros get away with it. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. So, Okay. And I'll shift to this angle here. Point base. Right hand, right hip. Left hand, not too wide or too close, but a shoulder width. And the tip covers your heart. Too low, too high. For example, here, we're talking spear, ancient battlefield, a lot of area to defense, you turn, you cut that in half by forming the triangle, which you must also, as part of the triangulate the body, okay? And so we go back right here, for example, here with the triangle. Full moon, okay, we'll, we'll change, okay? Closed door, semi-open door, fully open door. Okay. Now we go from movement four, left foot, left hand, right hand, right hand, right hip, the tip, level with your heart. This exposes the body. This exposes the body. You're forming a triangle. Okay. And grip. Loose and easy from the top. Okay. So for movement number five, shifting the weight. And when I shift the weight, we're going to execute what we call a thrusting position. Okay. okay. In that thrusting position, The, the right hand goes just under and in front of the heart area. If I go this way and I hit something, it's going to back up. Okay. Likewise, if I'm a little too low, I may overshoot. So this is here. Right? And as we fully expand, see this is here, not with the wristband, we execute the focusing movement, boom, okay? Now that focusing movement, okay? This is movement number six, boom. Now when you're doing that, there's a tendency to tighten it. 
It's a focusing. It's a little different than tighten, tightening. Focusing. And again, in front of and under the heart. Tip, heart level, goes up. Boom. Okay. And the difference between tensing and focusing is a very key study. Okay? So, one, Two, three, four, five, six. Full extension, boom, focus. Okay. Seven is both up and down. Cover the head and the face. And back down to the number five position. Notice how when I'm doing that, when I'm raising, I'm going back to the closed door position, but when this comes down, I'm going back to the semi-open position. Because I'm getting the hips in that raise and I'm getting the hips in that boom. Boom. Okay. So, recap, one, two, three, four, five, left, right, left foot, left hand, right hand, right hand on hip, six, make sure when you thrust, I'm off balance. So, knee covers the toe. And we're going from semi-open door position to fully open door position. Boom. And repeat. Eight is a repeat of six. And now, tip up, right hand up, left hand at the bottom, cover your head, right foot up to me, you know, same level as the left, left foot back. Now, what we're doing, we're going from closed door position. semi-open door position. Now notice here, if I go like this, it exposes the head and the face. So, and this is about level with my head. There's that same closing motion. This is the focusing motion, not a tensing motion, focusing motion. Not too low. Not too high, about level with your own head. And notice how the body is changing from my closed door position to semi open or to even more fully open. Now, uh, this right here can expose the head and the face. Head level here, boom. But rotating the hips gets me off a line from an incoming. Now, keep the hands as they are. Cover, left foot up to me, right. Same level here, and then the right foot back. And again, closed door position. The open door position. And the same thing. Off the line. And I'll notice how if I do this, it exposes the head. So I keep the head covered. As I do that. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I can find. Okay.
This will work. This is pretty visible, isn't it? Not so visible. You can kind of see it here. Okay, so we're using closed door, semi-open door, fully open door. The fully open door, you can see it if you're looking for it. This is very visible. Okay? And one of the uh, things, instead of using a door, we'll go a little more poetic. Triangular position. Full moon. Half moon. Quarter moon. To no moon. Full moon. Half moon, quarter moon, no moon. Full moon. Half moon, quarter moon, to no moon. So that change gets you out of the way of an incoming. But also, your hips are powering the movement, the thrusting motion. And the thrust, the striking or the cutting motion, each of them, boom, they have that same closing motion. It takes a uh, okay, so the whole thing, movement number one, two. Three, four. And I'll change my angle here. Take a step with the, the left foot, left hand, right hand, right hip. Six. Seven is both up and down. Eight, repeat six. Nine, right hand up, right foot up, left hand down, left foot back, cover. Now, 10, cover, keep the hands as they are. Okay? So, uh, Cliff, anything you want to add on that? Uh, just that that was some great uh, detail work and I'm doing some yes. polishing. Yeah, there's the details. And again, the details are up here. So one of the things about that point, you get the feel experience of that point, you're setting, you know, it's necessary to get the information right. But then bringing that information into being, it's like that bottom or lower half. <laughs> Anything? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm practicing it and I'm doing it with my body. Yeah. So, so well, that was very that's, helpful. That's constant. We, we talked about baseball a little bit because you're going to be coaching, which is good. Share your Aikido, right? Again, Sada Um Get more home runs and recorded home runs than anybody else. Okay? 868. He's Japanese. He played in the Japanese league, but he was a professional. And he also crossed paths with Americans because they were Americans would tour. They play exhibition games against the Japanese team. And um, Hall of Fame pitchers like Tom Seaver said, hey, this guy, maybe in America with the bigger parks, he doesn't hit 868, but he probably hits 500 or more. He probably hits in the mid 300s, and he drives in over 100 runs. And he also said something interesting. You can't throw the ball by him. In other words, speed, fastball. You can't get him with breaking pitches. And you can't get him with a change of speed. 
In other words, you know, for a baseball player, he had no weaknesses, no openings. A baseball player succeed. If you see it over three times out of 10, you're great, all right? And if you hit 20 home runs a year, you've got power. O was almost uncategorizable. And he owed a lot of that, he said, to instruction he got from Ueshiba Osensei, the founder of Aikido. And one thing that O said, I mean, he started to refine his basics. So we're talking about the, the way you hold, the triangular posture. Not This isn't baseball, this is Aikido. The way you look at the body changes. And we, we started with the door, but you can go full moon, half moon, quarter moon, no moon. Okay? And so, you know, those are just very important concepts in Aikido. And the way that O put it is when he, uh, what he noticed is, you know, there's certain, he distilled what he was doing over a period of time into certain basic moves. And his point was this, he simplified them, but they were his basics, okay? Stephen Curry on a shooting video says all Great shooters have one thing in common in basketball, total command of their basics. Now, you know, somebody may hold the ball different, position it different, but they can repeat it. And refining. And so today we, we kind of covered with the uh, movement of the staff and the first 10 movements of our 30 movement set, kind of the important basics, rip, Body position, feet triangular. And those are things you continue to work on. I continue to work on them. Okay, now, I'm not a Sarado or Stephen Curry, but you know, I kind of have that attention to detail. And the details themselves, you don't want them to run around up here. You have that point, the lower half, the experiential half of it. And you keep refining. Okay. Anything before we go? Nothing additional at this time. This was okay. a, a good class. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you. And uh, we will be having our class in Mountain View on Sunday. I know the this is the Labor Day weekend, but we're going to meet. And um, one of our more senior people, Meng is going to get the presentation of her third degree black belt certificate. So we get it through the local CAA, California Aikido Association, directly to world headquarters, Hongu Dojo. And so the rank comes from Tokyo. It comes from the organization that is connected to the Ueshiba family lineage. So it goes all the way back to Osensa. There are other organizations, okay? Aikido is Aikido, but we go right through the organizations. We're still supporting the Ueshiba family, okay? Anyway, I think we'll call it with that for today, so I thank you. Thank you, Sensei. See you Sunday. Yes, you will. And first of all, we go here, turn off the camera.